सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीरकरवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओ शातिशा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम the 10th shloka repeat after me if you can suresh sharanam sharma charanam sharma vishware ta praja bhavah praja bhavah अह संवत्सरो व्याल संवत्सरो व्याल प्रत्ययसर्वदर्शन वी हैव सीन सुरेश शरण शर्म विश्वरेता प्रजा भव वी हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देर सुरेश बोथ एट द मैक्रोकॉस्मिक लेवल एंड एट द माइक्रोकॉस्मिक लेवल सुरेश मींस द लॉर्ड ऑफ दैट विच इल्यूमिन्स सो द ऑर्गन्स ऑफ परसेप्शन एंड एक्शन इल्यूमिन देयर फील्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज एंड इंद्र व्हिच इज द इंटेलेक्ट कीप्स देम अंडर द कंट्रोल और शुड हैव बीन कीपिंग देम अंडर कंट्रोल एंड दैट विच इल्यूमिन्स दिस intellect mind and the organs of perception and action is called the suresh and similarly at the macrocosmic level at the samashti level all these natural forces indra is their leader and the one who controls that indra is suresh ha the one who is the boss of all these demigods and denizens of heavens charanam charanam that one artanam arti haranatvat charanam he is verily the abode of refuge the only thing that we have to do is cry with that intensity or uh, call out for him with that intensity like in the text language you know they have such abbreviations do you know what ttyl means so when you send a text message and it says at the end ttyl it means talk to you later you have to be at at par with the next generation <laughs> yes definitely <clears throat> pos do you know what that means it is an indication to the other person who is chatting on the other side that please change the topic don't continue on the same topic because parents over shoulder parents over shoulder so and they said like you know there is something very funny so they will put lol laughing out loud so here sharana means we have to learn the art of col crying out loud calling out loud but call with that intensity that when we when we are in trouble the only one that we have sharana anyatha sharanam nasti there is nowhere else to turn to it is only the lord that i can turn unto 
देर फोर ओ लॉर्ड प्लीज कम डाउन देर इज नथिंग एल्स दैट कैन प्रोटेक्ट मी देर इज नथिंग एल्स दैट कैन टेक केयर ऑफ मी अदर देन योर सेल्फ शरण शर्म शर्म परमानंद रूपत्वात परमानंद रूपत्वात द वन हु इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ ब्लिसफुल बी एटीट्यूड सो दैट ब्लिसफुल वन इज कॉल्ड शर्म सो इफ यू हैव द लास्ट नेम एज शर्म एंड यू आर नॉट ब्लिसफुल यू आर सच एन इंसल्ट टू दैट नेम If you are ending up being only blisters full, painful, you are not a match for that name. Charma means Paramananda Rupatvat. Now today, Vishwa Reta ha. Reta means seeds. Vishwa Reta ha. Vishwa Reta ha. The entire creation. as the seed form is himself alone himself that paramatma alone so this particular part of the story you will find it repeated in christian islam hindu and all kinds of scriptures almost that the entire creation was under deluge pralaya and bhagwan takes the form of a fish meenakara swarupa namo and the instruction that he gives and we know that that part of the story wherein day by day or moment by moment that he puts in his palms and the palm it outgrows so puts in the kamandalu it outgrows and puts it in a little lake it outgrows then finally puts it in the ocean and it it has got a golden horn and i've never seen a fish with a golden horn but this is a unique fish bhagwan himself has come in that form and the instruction to that rishi was that hey gather seeds of the entire creation one one sample each so that after the deluge is done you can spread them around again and they'll start taking shape and form was he really you know in a panic mode that if he lost these seeds if he lost these uh, species that he'll not be able to create that was not the issue at all he said if it can be done by protecting these many you know all species put into one boat then i don't need to recreate the entire creation after this deluge otherwise the entire creation is intact because he is not just the creator but he is the seed also he is the seed here means karanatvat karanatva he is the cause for this entire creation now when you look at the cause the entire creation may not look as if it has come from that seed have you seen a banyan tree this this what i have observed in india that most of these concrete structures that we have there on the window sills on the terrace and other places we will find this people and banyan and all these you know, suddenly start sprouting up there i it, it was vague for me how did this end up there so the banyan seed is or the fruit is eaten by the birds and the birds remains fall in these different places where they gather and those seeds get trapped in between those cracks and it starts sprouting from there the biggest banyan tree expansion there is one in uh, chennai one in uh, kolkata and there is one near bodh gaya place and there are various and 
if, if you have lots of time to really kill, go lose yourself and find your way out. It's not easy. You'll be trapped inside. It's so elaborately spread, miles and miles, that it is spread around. Then look at that seed. It is so tiny. Maybe one tenth of a mustard seed. Mustard seed itself is a small one. And this banyan seed is one tenth of a mustard seed. Can you even envision that this entire banyan tree and its expanse? was a possibility in that tiny little seed. So the entire creation, he is the seed, he is the cause, he is the karana. Vishwaretaha. Prajabhavaha. And because he is the cause, what comes out from him? Sarvaha prajaha yat sakashat udbhavanti that from whom all the living beings spring forth from. Sarvaha prajaha yat sakashat udbhavanti. If there is this kind of population, Bhagavan is still having hope. with this creation. He has not lost his faith in humanity yet. For him it is an easy task, right? Just to pull one cord and everything is withdrawn. But still we are thriving and we are you know, being born in such numbers. At least the species called the Homo sapiens. The most a misnorm of the creation, I would say. Because everything else remains in balance. It is only we who don't. If he is producing more of us, so he still I would say that you know he still has hope in this humanity. That maybe one day we will change. Prajabhavaha, the one who expands himself out in the form of the Praja. Praja, all these different species. In fact, the Praja can include even the insentient ones also. Because insentient ones may not be appearing with life, but still there is Jivatva in it. Did you know that when the sculptors, you know, the architects and the old time architects and sculptors, when they would build a temple and create the main murti, main vigraha, and then uh, create the poles, pillars, and elaborate structures that they carve out of stone. Even in stones, there are three kinds of stones. Masculine, feminine, and neuter gender. All the masculine stones are used in carving out all these devas. All the feminine stones are used in carving out all the devis. And all the pillars and the supporting beams and they are carved out of the neuter gender. So I was with a uh, Sthapati. Sthapati is the uh, sculptor. And this uh, I had this rare opportunity to live in their house for a couple of days. He was very kind. So as a time pass, like you know, he would bring out all his scriptures. So for him, somebody who understood Sanskrit, and un because of that understanding of Sanskrit, he could somebody who could understand in this day and time his line of work. So he brought all these old scriptures of his, you know, coming from generations to generations. And he opened them up and he said, one of the pointers that he was pointing to us, I asked him, how do you even identify which stone is male or female or neuter? So he says, you know, he tried showing it, but I was not having that kind of a keen observation, I guess. 
So he would tap the chisel, not the hammer, he would tap the chisel on the stone. The kind of sound that it produces tells the person whether it is masculine, feminine or neuter. So the entire creation has got that expression of that Paramatma, Prajabhavaha. He is the cause and he is the substratum, he is the platform from which the entire creation springs forth from. Not just create the people, I say. Ahaha samvatsaro vyalaha pratyaya sarvadarshanaha Ahaha Ahaha, one meaning is Prakasha Rupatvat Ahaha. That he is the, in the form of, he comes in the form of a day. Aha means day. Like Rajani means what? She is here, let her tell. Ahaha is the opposite of that. Ahaha means day. There are many more meanings. Some of them, and when you go into the technicalities, they say the entire day is 24 hours, right? One day long, meaning 24 hours long. But then somebody you know, technically says you can call it day only when there is light, when there is sunshine. So they say 12 hours is day. Now those who want to debate it, please continue. For us, it is a definition of day, where it is prakasha rupatvat, wherein it is shining forth with illuminance. Ahaha also means that which is of the nature of time. He creates this creation and keeps it under complete balance and control. With a simple aspect of time. Kalo Jagad Bhakshakaha. What is Kala? Kala means time. Jagad Bhakshakaha. What does this Kala do? It eats away the entire Jagat. And it does an impartial job. Time does not wait upon anybody, whatever be our background. You know, you do Kala Upasana. Do you think time is going to stop? Time is not going to be in our control. We are in control of time. We think we pass time. Can we really pass time? So, Bhartri Hari in his Vairagya Shataka, he says, Kalo na yataha, vayame vayataha. We think we are passing time or we are doing time pass. But in fact, what is actually happening is the time is passing us away. Whether we are educated, uneducated, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are, uh, you know, samskaravan or vikaravan, it doesn't matter. When the time is done, we are consumed in that time. So in order to make the best use of that time, he expresses forth as ahaha. That time wherein you can bring about all your um, energies, creative surge and be productive. That time is called ahaha. <clears throat> Ahaha. Samvatsaraha. Samvatsaraha. Kalatmana sthitaha Vishnu. What does Samvatsara mean? That which is the nature of the concept of time. That Vishnu who expresses in the form of concept of time. So he is a day. And any other quantity of time that can quantify time. So in the Bhagavatam, there is an amazing section wherein they talk about 
त्रिसराणु ना त्रिसराणु मीन्स अ पार्टिकल विच हैज गॉट थ्री कॉम्पोनेंट्स और अ मॉलिक्यूल विथ थ्री पार्टिकल्स and the smallest calculated time is the sun's rays you know going through that particular molecule from one end of the diameter to the other end that is the smallest amount of time so the first time i heard as to what this trisaranu is my jaw just dropped trisaranu means the ozone particle and the ozone molecule is o3 it has got three particles of oxygen very unstable when we try to create that but up in the just beyond stratosphere one of those spheres It's been what 25 years that I have read that concept. Feel old looking at it now. So in that, the final layer wherein there is that ozone layer, when the sun's rays pass through that diameter from one end to the other, that is the smallest particle. Few times multiples of it is the time called. second and that second travels you know we know the time it travels 60 times or clicks 60 times to make a minute and a minute makes 60 clicks and it is an hour an hour goes about a 24 times then it is a day not exactly 24 there is few minutes extra and you calculate it that is where we have uh, you know th- and that is where the the astrology and astronomy and the text that when we read it it's mind boggling they have such precision that they have a leap year in between they have uh, calculated the time of or the year is not uh, you know 365 days but it is 364 point something so they they include all that and it is 365 and a quarter ha huh. so it is just about a little more than the 365 that we count even that is mentioned so he is the samvatsara that which we calculate age in experience in don't we so whenever we ask what is your experience what do we say we don't end up saying the experience in minutes and seconds we usually give it in years so that creative surge which is expressed in aha ha that productivity which is measured in years that experience which is measured in years and what is this experience meant for to give us that wisdom wherein we understand that that which i am searching for is not there where i am searching that one bit is understood gnana and vairagya becomes automatic almost is one conviction which has to be changed and some of that conviction doesn't get changed if years of experience that we have gathered and this conviction is not dawning upon us it doesn't dawn upon us that my happiness is not out there my sense of peace is not out there then all that effort that we are putting to understand that wisdom that has that experience that is 
is all going down the drain. Ahaha, samvatsaraha, vyalaha, vyalaha, one meaning is that he is, I mean, vyalaha, that word has got the meaning of being a snake, a serpent is also called vyala. But here, vyala means that which is, that which you, we cannot approach. Vyalavat vrihitum ashakyatvat vyalaha. Unapproachable. Whatever we take, whatever we try, can we reach? It is like Sometimes it is a funny incident that happen. You know, these small uh, furry little dogs. What do you call them? I know that this much that it starts with a P. Pomegranate? No. Pomegranate is a fruit. Pomeranian? Ha. Ah. Thank you. The Pomeranian. They have this white fur, white little, small little dogs. They are usually the pets at home. And, you know, sometimes when they have an itch on their tail, you should see their poor uh, effort. It tries, moves its head. And as it moves its head, its head towards the tail, tail seems to be a tricky thing. As it moves, the tail you know, slips away. You will find that the dog now starts spinning around. It starts running so fast around its own tail to catch its own tail. And suddenly a flash of wisdom occurs. That tail. I think the rotation is on the wrong axis. Instead of rotating this way, I think the tail is that side, right? Let me rotate the other side. And it starts rotating. The poor thing only does is keeps rotating. Can we really catch that tail? Can that dog really catch that tail? You're unapproachable. Similarly, that which is our source, it becomes unapproachable. So, our Ramakrishna Paramahansa says a very beautiful, cute story. He says that a salt doll kept asking its parents, Dad, Mom, where did I come from? Where is my origin? Generations after generations, they were forbidden to find their source. Salt families, they were forbidden to find their own source. But this one inquisitive doll wanted to find. And it was like a blasphemy. You know, you don't talk such things in salt families. But it was determined. So it went to the place where salt got packed, where the fields, salt fields, so where the salt was being packed, it pestered that person who was packing it, uh, really begged, uh, you know, keep following this route and you will come across a huge mass of water. But let me warn you, your parents have been my good friends. So it becomes my responsibility to tell you, warn you, that observe that source from distance, but don't go close by. Has a kid ever obeyed to such instruction? And they say especially that don't. As young as six, seven months old, you tell them not to put something, They'll keep looking at you and 
they wait the moment you turn towards them they look at you and they know that they are looking you are looking at them and then do that which you have asked them not to do so the salt dollars what is wrong in going and finding out so the legend in the salt families is that those who go pursuing never come back what happens so this salt doll gets into the ocean the shores and that entire expanse of it it looks so inviting and the gurgling waters is as if you know it comes there and you know evens out the entire floor of that seashore almost like saying that you know please welcome you are my long last this uh, inspired the salt steps into that waters to find its source no sooner that it stepped into that water what happened there was no more doll left to identify we try realizing bhagwan that is why the poets have put it very beautifully prem ki gali ati sankari jisme do na samaye prem ki gali the the street of love for the lord is very very narrow how narrow where two cannot it cannot accommodate two people and then he continues to say jab hari tha jab main tha tab hari nahi ab hari hai to main nahi the one who is trying to recognize that paramatma as long as that the stupid ego existed hari was not seen and now that i see that hari and now that i see that paramatma that who was searching for this paramatma no longer exists in both cases strive strive to attain that paramatma being a limitation it is unapproachable vyalah and you have transcended it and achieved it that who was searching for it no longer exists still unapproachable vyalah pratyayah pratyayah the word meaning of it is pratiti hi pragna pratyayah that by which that because of which i know everything as isness everything is known with that isness isness spelling is not e a s e but i s isness what do you see right now the hand is you recognize it with its presence even that which is not there what is our sentence say that is not so the entire vedanta panchadashi there is one particular chapter <clears throat> how that one particular sentence is not is taken for discussion because those two are contradicting if it is is it cannot be not you getting the idea is represents presence not represents the absence of presence and we use it in a sentence is not present is absent or the presence is absent this is it's a most weird statement ever made because everything is cognized everything is cognized through that presence alone pratiti hi pragnyaha pratyayah that 
cognition, that awarefulness, that ability to know everything as easiness is called pratyayaha. This pratyayaha is given in the Mahavakya as pragnanam brahma. Pratiti means pragna, that awarefulness. Wherein there is not even a concept that I am trying to know. There is that knowing. There is no trial to know. There is no effort to know. It is effortlessly illumining, conscious of, awareful of. That is called Pratyayaha. In this particular shloka we saw Suresha Sharanam Sharma Vishwareta Prajabhavaha Ahasamvatsaro Vyalaha Pratyayaha Sarva Darshanaha Sarva Darshanaha Sarvataha Chakshuhu Sarvatokshi Shiro Mukam This is what Bhagavad Gita says Sarva Darshanaha He is a witness of everything so there is a story <clears throat> that our he is the one who started the Vishishta Advaita. Even in Gujarat, the Thakurji is established by him. What is it? He was from Andhra. So Allah Acharya. One of those Acharyas. Ramanuja Acharya. Thank you. So Ramanuja Acharya ji, he was a rebel growing up. He would do things, he would think about things so out of box that he was a kind of a, a rebel in his times. His guru gave him a mantra upadesha. And uh, that don't reveal this mantra to every, anybody. This is meant only for you. I said, what will I get out of it? By chanting this, it will take you. You shall transcend all miseries. And it will give you the absolute bliss. So as soon as he heard, he was just five, six years old. He went on to the top of his house. Immediately after the initiation, he went on to the top of the house, on to the edge of his house, and shouted at the people that were there in that street. Hey, you all come here. Do you want to be happy? <laughs> Start chanting this mantra. <laughs> the guru had to pull him back again. He said, Beta, that is meant for you. That which is given to you may or may not be suitable for everybody to chant. Now, there are some uh, electric gadgets or uh, you plug it into 110 or they function with 220 or they function with you know different capacities, AC, DC, different capacities, different modes. That, so, this is suitable only for you. No, but I want to get something, a method wherein it will help everybody. So that was his mindset. He was a rebel. He used to think out of the box. So, one day, his guru gave all the students one fruit. Go eat. So they were happy. Any day that you get prasad is a happy day. So as they got the fruit, they said, but one, one instruction. Do not eat this fruit when somebody is seeing you. All these students, you know, somebody hides in the bathroom, locks the door, somebody under the bed, somebody up the roof somebody under the tree, somebody over the tree. 
Everybody finished the job. Ramanujacharya he comes back with the fruit intact in his hand. His guru asked him, what happened? Why didn't you finish it up? He said, the other day you were telling that Bhagavan watches us do everything. Now if I eat, though I may not be able to see him now, but definitely he is seeing me. But your instruction was eat at that place where it, nobody is seeing. So I did not find any place wherein you know, he would not be witnessing or he would not be seeing. I said, better you are the only one who has understood the meaning of Sarva Darshanaha. The one who is seeing everything. Now there is a second meaning. Second meaning is that which is visible everywhere. The Paramatma, where is that Paramatma? Do you have to go to some specific spot? That you have to go to Madina, Makkah or Bethlehem or Kashi, Banaras to find Bhagavan? Sarva Darshanaha. That which is expressing, that which is available anywhere. So Gurudev, when he was in his last stages, some, some devotee asked him, Swamiji, you know, after you, like, you know, it is so shocking, but you know, we have gotten so used to seeing you and uh, how, how will we continue? So he said, and if you start crying, and all the Vedanta that I have taught is gone, is a waste. But understand it this way. Even at that moment, look at his compassion. He says, now I am functioning through one channel, one counter, he said, one window. Now after I drop this window, I shall be available through various windows. Scores of opportunity. But I will not look like this window. It will be appearing in different forms. That is what is Paramatma. And the one who understood it is called Prahalada. The one who challenges that understanding is called Hiranyakashipu. Now which side of the picture are we? Are we with Prahlada or are we with Hiranyakashipu? Now, Prahlada, what does it mean? I love that name. Ahlada. Ahlada is the expression of ecstasy. Ahlada. You know, the joy, the, the, the laughter. Prahlada. Prahlada, the, the, you know, no boundaries of that ecstasy. That ecstasy which does not have any boundaries. Why? Because that individual's mind has transcended the concept of viewing the Lord in one specific place alone. Not that they stopped viewing that Lord in that specific place, but they have stopped viewing that Lord specific place alone. That yes, there is God in that too, but the God is available everywhere as well. Sometimes not understanding this concept, the neo-intelligent, babies into intelligence. So their questioning is, they say God is everywhere. Then what is the point in worshipping in specific worship places. It is a futile effort. This kid hearing his dad argue with somebody with, you know, God is everywhere, goes out, plays while he's playing, something clicks in his head. And what does he do? He removes air from all the tires of his dad's car. 
So dad comes out, screams at him, and says, "What foolishness is this?" I said, "Dad, why do you need air in that tire when air is everywhere?" The kid may or may not have understood what the kid has said. It is a very potent form to understand. Though air is everywhere, its purposefulness is only when it is in that tire at that moment. Similarly, not everybody can tune themselves to that Paramatma which is everywhere. We have to start with the tuning of ourselves to that Paramatma in a form, then transcend. When he could see even in the inanimate, his father's question was, do you see that Paramatma in that pillar? Anu, Paramanu, like, you know, even in the subatomic particle, it is nothing but Paramatma alone. What are you talking about this pillar? The Hirani Rashu gets angry. He says, Where? What are you talking? I don't see any God in this pillar. So to give that Jada Buddhi of Hiranya Kashupu an idea of what God can be, Bhagavan comes in that peculiar Rudra Rupa of Nrasimha Bhagavan, tearing himself through that pillar. Sarva Darshana, that which is there in every being, every thing. So how should our interaction be? With that attitude of seeing that Paramatma everywhere. Continuing further. Repeat after me. Aja Sarveshwara Siddhaha Siddhya Sarvadi Rachutaha Siddhya Sarvadi Rachutaha Vrsha Kapira Meyatma Sarva Yoga Vinisrutaha <coughs> Aja Sarveshwara Siddha Siddha Sarvadi Rachutaha Vrsha Kapira Meyatma Sarva Yoga Vinisrutaha <coughs> Ajaha the very first word for Gurudev also when we start. Om Ajaya Namaha, Om Abhyaya Namaha. Aja, Ajaha actually. When we say Aja, Aja means a goat. It has to be said Ajaha. You are learning Sanskrit right. So ask your teacher. Aja means a goat. Ajaha means ja jayate, that which is born. Aja meaning that which is unborn. Bhagavad Gita says, Najayate mriyate va kadachit, nayam bhutva bhavita va nabhuyaha, ajo nitya shashvato yam puranaha, nahanyate hanyamane sharire. Ajaha. That which is never born. Because everything that which is born, Jatasya Hidruvor Mrityuhu, everything that is born will perish. Doesn't it? Everything that has got an MFG has got an EXP. I am not talking text language. Anything, any bottle or anything that you have, it will have two dates. See? Manufacturing date and there is, they say, search for it somewhere else. Yeah, water bottles also have. I could hear that too. It says that you, know, you have to use it best used by. It doesn't say expiration, it says best used by. It gives you a date. 
but otherwise most of the produce that we buy has got a, a definite expiration date and there are some products you know that you don't need to have a date on it because the moment you take and the texture is little different you know it is done its time because most of these you know the, uh, vegetables and uh, fruits these days have got such a coating of that uh, wax so the cucumbers and the uh, apples and uh, even zucchini and, and they have such a shine in it i was watching this live in india that it is not just wax it is reddish color wax so that it not just gives shine but it also gives the depth of color so i thought that was only in india even here take a peeler and don't dig into the fruit but just go scraping on the fruit you would find a thin layer of wax coming out so because of that wax the fruit looks shining the fruit looks bright the fruit looks fresh so earlier i just not understand that you know that it would be sitting there for a week or so and then i one day find time to you know relish it so i cut that fruit and the moment you cut it it is dark inside then why does it happen it looks fresh but it why is this kind of an illusion then it got resolved and most of them look fresh but may not be fresh from inside it is just like the people and their mindset whether it is botox or you know the skin pulling or plastic surgery or whatever you do you get the point anything that is born created will perish so there is never a date or a time wherein paramatma perishes and since he is the seed of this universe nothing happens to this universe as well. which is what even science tells doesn't it that neither matter nor energy can be created nor can be destroyed they can only interchange different formats water when it is flowing it has got kinetic energy when stored it has got potential energy and that stored water when it is channelized through the turbines the potential energy transforms into kinetic energy the kinetic energy moves into the turbines giving it mechanical energy the mechanical energy start producing electric energy one changing to the other as a format and our rishis have noted this way long ago that's why they were not scared of death so death is a creative destruction it is a, how can destruction be creative either it is destroyed or it is created it is like two sides of the same coin on one hand it gets destroyed to be created as something else when you know that art of creativity out of destruction then in even in our local day to day language we are called masters in that particular field when something that you are cooking has been spoiled your child or your daughter in law or whoever was cooking it has added something or some ingredient is more or less or it has been 
it has changed its <laughs> name and form <laughs> you intended one thing it became something else what is the expertise now that which has been destroyed now to recreate it in a different format so when we were trying to make rasgullas the, the thing the paneer would break and dad was indian he said add more milk and make kalakand out of it <laughs> Only thing is, he had to spend more time at it. But even that milk joined with this paneer will give the consistency, and quickly you can make the you know, kalakand. Instead of making rasgulla, it became kalakand. It has changed its name and form, but another sweet has come. So even the dal, there is lot of salt or sort lot of spice. Very simple. add few more vegetables add little more water add little more of uh, tamarind into it became sambar that which got ruined has now creatively changed its format isn't that called expertise so paramatma holds that expertise with relation to this creation that everything that gets destroyed reappears in a different new format the seed loses its seedness to become a sapling the sapling loses its saplingness to become a plant or a bush then the plant starts producing flower the flowerness dies to give birth to a fruit the fruitness dies to give again rise to seeds in each format in each change there is each step it is changing from its older format to become new thing actually gets destroyed but we start looking at this entire creation as something other than paramatma because we have some invested interests of mine and not mine in that invested interests of mine and not mine we get carried away and get limited by our own wrong convictions So the paramatma is not something other than what we are seeing sarva darshana does everything get destroyed no why he is eternal that which is eternal can never be born yeah the moment you say there is a birth inevitably there is जा ही ध्रुवो हो मृत्यु बट दैट विच डज नॉट हैव इधर बर्थ के नॉट हैव डेथ इधर बट वी गेट आइडेंटिफाइड विद दिस बॉडी एंड वॉन्ट टू मेंटेन द लॉन्जिविटी ऑफ दिस बर्थ एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड असुरत्व टू ट्राई एग्जिस्टिंग एंड कंटिन्यूइंग टू एग्जिस्ट एज एटर्नल एज पॉसिबल थ्रू दिस बॉडी Isn't that what Hiranyaka Hiranyaka Shipu asked? To find longevity through that body. And if you read Bhagavad Gita, his message to his mother and to his sister-in-law was that you know it is you take out Hiranyaka Shipu Vacha, it almost feels like you know Sri Bhagavan Vacha. You know pure Vedanta. He says Atma, Ajaha, Avyaya, Sakshi. It never has death. why are you weeping for that kind of atma but what was his interpretation of atma for when it came to himself atma sharira let the sharira be eternal let the sharira never die that's why he had to come up with such clauses all the asuras their mentality is the same what are they anticipating to continue live as long as possible through the body as the body and call it eternal ajaha 
the only one which is beyond such death or birth is that which is eternal, which is Paramatma. Therefore, he is called Sarveshwaraha. Sarvesham Ishwaranam Ishwaraha iti Sarveshwaraha. That who is no, the Ishwara of everything. Sarvesham Bhutanam Ishwaraha iti. The one who is the boss, the one who is controller of everything, supreme controller of everything. He is the lord of or god of everything. He is the boss of everything. Now on a different note, if he is the boss of everything, can anything in this universe happen without his will? Can anything happen? Whose world is this? His world? In his world, why have we been given the opportunity to be a human being? To realize one's own nature and to be the instrument of his expression. Like a flute in Bhagwan Krishna's hand. If the bamboo has some blocks in between, can it be an efficient instrument of giving out music? It has to grow. It has to grow and empty itself. And then, such an emptied one, when it goes into the hands of the Lord, it expresses as a divine instrument. Similarly, the entire life is given unto us to realize our true nature and to be his efficient tool to serve this beautiful creation. But instead, what do we do with this life? create patterns wherein we do anything other than realizing our true self, our true nature. That is not even the priority. When we read Ramayana and such great texts, when King Janaka's palace is described, his court is described, it gives goosebumps to me every single time I read it. Because his court, every minister in his court was a realized Mahatma. Can you imagine what beautiful the entire kingdom would have been? Led by somebody who, who is not just realized but with a congregation of people who are realized. Can you imagine that? Not led by some individual who is corrupted, the not, in, not engaged by, not led by somebody who is doing it for their own selfish, hidden motives and agendas to be fulfilled. But somebody who had that complete awareness, blissful disposition, the entire team was such. No wonder his entire kingdom aspired to become like him. Which is where the saying comes. Yatha, Raja, Tatha, Praja. So when that nobility is lost, what has become? Yatha, Praja, Tatha, Raja. The Raja has become as good as us or as bad as us. One of the bad apples from here has become there. So instead of leading, it only is a downward spiraling effect. 
Sarveshwaraha, the one who is the absolute boss, wherein he has given this beautiful opportunity to everybody to realize and be a great instrument of his expression into this world. Atmano Mokshaya Jagat Hitaya Cha Realizing for oneself and thus thereby becoming a productive, positive influence on the society. Sometimes it is hurtful when you listen to the western media and the western science and the western uh, scholars. They say that Hinduism is a selfish book. That it teaches you only to realize your own self and get beyond sorrow and misery. May your other people be, you know, when the entire world be on fire, it doesn't matter. Point is, you can be of good help without any hidden agenda, without any hidden motives for some selfish gains. And you can do that service a justice only when you have that stability within. Otherwise, we run NGOs as if they were some business conglomerates. It's a name of service. But what we end up doing is probably what? 40-50% is an overhead? 80%? Much of time is ninety percent. Okay, you get the point. If the person does not have that peace and satisfaction within, even service becomes a business. Prayer becomes a business. Education, samskara. Vidya Samskar it is called, that also becomes a profession, a business. But the one who has that peace within, that stability within, can alone be that productive. Sarveshwaraha, the one who is the boss, who is the lord of everything, and becomes everything, gives that opportunity to us. We ask, you know, where is God's grace? The very capacity of ours to ask that question proves His immense grace. In spite of questioning His authority, He has not snatched away our speaking capacity. Mukam karoti vachalam. The one who gives speech to the one who was dumb. Pangum langhayate girim. The one who did not have feet, who did not have limbs, he provides the limbs so that he can even cross over the treacherous mountainous path. Can't he do the reverse order? Vachalam Mukam Karoti. If he can do this way, he can do the other way also. But has he ever done that? Because you question his authority. That benign lordship over everything makes him Sarveshwaraha, lord of everything. Because the moment we get a little power, it gets straight to our head that we start becoming mean. And what is the actual satta or actual uh, lordship over everything is when you have that meaningfulness in expressing that strength, that vigor, so that you provide everybody that fair opportunity to grow and be independent. Sarveshwaraha. 
Is there something that is possible even? And don't worry, he is Siddhaha. He has proven this again and again and again through various masters who have realized him. The moment we talk about all these great masters, you know, Gurudev, Swami Tapon Maharaj, Vivekanandji, this year we are celebrating his 150th year uh, birth anniversary. And all these great stalwarts that we talk about, then we immediately resign and say, Oh, you know, they were all great people, you know, where are we? He is Siddhi. He is not just Siddha, proven, but he is Siddhi. That which can be achieved by each one of us. Therefore, he is Prasiddhi. He is famous. Not because he is not achievable. Not because he cannot be attained. Because he provides that opportunity, provides the means, provides the direction and says, now go put your effort. It is something which is possible and not impossible. Sarveshwaraha Siddhaha Siddhihi Sarvadihi Sarvadihi He is the beginning. Adi means beginning. Beginning for everything. Therefore, whenever you begin something, you start with him. And when we keep talking about some abstract topics, dedicate your actions to the Lord. How do you dedicate? If it was some patra, pushpa, phala, I can say, okay, I dedicate it. Done. Actions. How do I dedicate it? So, Mahatma said a very simple but beautiful step. He said, before you start any action, start with remembering him and thanking him for giving you the opportunity to do what you are doing. Why do I have to think? Because he is Sarvadihi. He is the one without whom nothing can begin. I was watching a play on Shakespeare. Shakespeare, when he was in that mood of creating another beautiful marvel, said, no director or nobody can control him once he is in that frame. So once he is directing and you know teaching everybody the dialogues and the script and he is very much into it, so somebody comes in between uh, while he is into it. Uh, what exactly are you doing there? Get out! So he looks at him very coolly and he says, I am that because of which you can scream at me saying get out. <laughs> he says, meaning, I am the finance of this entire... He says, okay, please, step aside. Me not get out, <laughs> but he says, step aside. Let me continue making good use of your support of finance. Point there is, that without whose blessings, that without whose support, nothing can ever happen. But you know, the Shakespeare's play could have happened only when that financier is supporting it. Similarly, our life, anything can happen is a possibility when... We think of the Lord as the beginning of everything. So whenever we do whatever we are doing, like we have this habit, right? Whenever we start satsang, what do we start with? Om. Whenever we are done with satsang, what do we end with? Om. Shanti, Shanti. Both are Shanti part only. Sometimes when you go to some traditional uh, ashrams, you will be confused being trained or conditioned in Chinmaya mission. Because we start with Sahana Vavatu, end with Purnamadaha. There is no rule, hard and fast rule saying that, you know, you have to end with Purnamadaha or end, start with Sahana Vavatu. It is just a tradition that we follow here. 
the first time i had gone to some kailash ashram or something else, they started the entire session as purnamadaha purnam i said no we are just starting and they are already ending it took me a while to understand the point is both are shanti mantra you think of that supreme and start and you think of that supreme end and that he is the sarva adi he is the beginning of everything though he is the beginning of everything he himself is immovable he supports the beginning but yet he is immovable he is like the uh, you know nowadays in the airports you don't have to walk through those long alleys they have this conveyor belts what do the conveyor belts do you have to go stand on them you start in the beginning and then you are moved to the other end so the movement happens the movement is there does the thing actually move from that place it does paramatma's relationship with this universe is like that so every time i am on a conveyor belt i say paramatma swarupaya namaha that this is the very indicator of paramatma this is how paramatma is the though he starts the movement he is the beginning of the movement yet he is achutah immovable chuti is to fall achutah that which cannot fall that which cannot that is which is immovable siddhi siddhah siddhi sarvadihi achutah chavishyate na iti na chutah na chavate na chavishyate does not fall did not fall cannot fall and there is no thing that can make it fall because he is shashvatam shiva machutam that which is eternal shashvata shiva auspicious and therefore nothing to corrupt him to make him inauspicious therefore he is achutah <clears throat> now with this particular achutah adi shankaracharya ji brings it to our notice he says iti nam nam prathamam shatam vivrutam with this last word that we just saw prathamam shatam vivrutam first 100 pointers to that paramatma is discussed or are discussed we just crossed a century we just hit a century talking in cricket language we just hit a century so moving forward vrusha kapira meyatma sarva yoga vinasrutah vrusha kapihi so there is a huge argument between various you know mahatmas or interpreters of how to interpret this particular word as vrishakapi i read a very beautiful interesting which is not based on shankar bhashya so i'll be giving a different meaning there kapi means what one meaning that we understand is monkey but the there is another meaning for it the another meaning for it is kam sukham pibati yaha sah kapihi kam meaning sukham pi pibati the one who is constantly drinking the nectar of sukha the one who is constantly basking in the glory of blissful nature such one is called kapihi vrsha kapihi vrsha kapihi 
the one who is constantly reigning forth effortlessly as bliss in everything around us is nothing but the entire nature is throbbing with blissful beatitude the only one who is flustered frustrated is us because we are in that imbalance get back to that balance and we see that everything around is nothing but throbbing in that beautiful balance of bliss adi shankara acharya ji says that brahma satyam jagan mithya that the brahman is the only truth jagat it is mithya it is illusion so all the scientific minded ones they immediately argue that which i see that which i can touch that which i can feel that which i can smell how can you call this an illusion so don't you know wage a war against poor uh, adi shankara acharya ji because we have to read the next sentence as well brahma satyam jagan mithya jeevo brahmaiva na paraha and the jeeva is not something other than that brahma tatva but as long as we see ourselves as something other than that paramatma then what we end up perceiving in this world that perception is limited hence therefore it is illusion the perception of the uh, jeeva has to be only limited and that limited entity can only be illusory so when you ask our guru of adi shankara acharya ji what is your stand on this creation and uh, destruction of this creation i'm talking about the guru of the guru of adi shankara acharya guru maharaj the grand guru because shankara acharya ji's guru is govinda bhagavat pada and govinda bhagavat pada's guru is gauda pada so gauda pada you ask him what is your opinion about this creation he says what creation does it even exist we see it as jagat with our limited vision and the master see it as not as the jagat but as parameshwara himself as that paramatma himself so to see this entire universe as that paramatma throbbing in that blissful nature is called vrishakapihi vrishakapihi ameyatma ameyatma matum parichetum na shakyate atma yasya that which cannot be ameya ameya meya is to account for meya is to be able to count meya is to be able to measure that which is immeasurable that whose nature is immeasurable that is the very abode of immense resource there is nothing that ever gets you know depleted such nature is paramatma so there is never that point wherein you come to say that you know my bliss has come to an end or shakapi hi what about that time when this you know everything goes uh, it finishes this is ameyatma it cannot come to an end because it is there is nothing to nothing other than it to make it come to an end you know there is one side 
food and you know, there are these experiments they have done. You know, one side food and there are these rats. So rats eat food. And once the food is done, what, does, what do they do? They start eating themselves, amongst themselves. There is this one you know, Asura. He was created by the Lord. Or Shiva created him. And uh, that for which he had created this particular uh, Asura or that that energy, the lower form of energy, that person straightened himself. Now this 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 energy that was created, he said, "What do I do now? What do I do now?" He started pestering the Lord. The Lord said, "Eat yourself." So you will find that in most of the temples there is this arch, Prabhavali. In the center of that Prabhavali, there is this demonic looking big eyed one. It almost looks like the tongue outside. It is not the tongue, it is actually his body inside. I said, Bhagavan, but you know, you created me the energy. Now I have come, I cannot uh, be useless. Don't worry. You will be the first one, Prathama Vandita. You will be the first one who will be seen before even people see me as the darshan. Here, <clears throat> that which is created by Paramatma, that which is Paramatma himself, can never come to an end. It always is sustained by himself unto himself. There is nothing that can eat himself up. There is nothing that can destroy him. Therefore it is Ameyatma. Sarva Yoga Vinistrataha. Sarva Yoga Vinistrataha. How do we attain this particular Paramatma? Is it? Sarva Yoga Vinistrataha. Nana Shastrokta Yad Yogat Apagatvatva for which Bhagavan himself has expressed as Karma, Jnana, Bhakti and Dhyana Yoga. We have three instruments, Baba. This is such a simple logic. We have three instruments. Body, mind, intellect. To purify oneself at the body level, the yoga is called karma yoga. At a physical level. At an emotional level, it is called bhakti yoga. At an intellectual level, it is called jnana yoga. The one who has achieved this balance at these three levels and detached to oneself, such one, when they sit on the seat of meditation, they acquire this vrusha kapihi ameyatma. So he is not just the goal, he is also the process. Sadhya, sadhana and the laksha of that sadhana is that paramatma. Tarva yoga vinistrata. Thus we end the 24th, not the 24th, the 11th shloka and we have just finished the 103rd pointer towards the Lord. We will continue how many ever possible tomorrow as the last day for this particular series. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyonamaha Harihi Om